And we are back. Um, like we we did not leave at all. Yeah, this is still one in the morning, and uh, this is the first conversation of the day. If you're just joining us, so you're still on time. This is Sport on Tech, where we talk about uh, technology, innovation, and any issues around that area of policy, and uh, you know matters that concern us and today we want to talk about data protection and privacy compliance in kenya so when you talk about data protection it's about your personal data how is it being used out there and why do you need to be concerned about how your data is being used so this is a conversation that we are going to have with linda um she is a professional working uh linda gishohi is a professional lawyer and a data protection specialist at kektenet karibu sana linda thank you so much glad to have you with us Thank you for having me. Okay, so um, let's start this conversation with um, what do we mean? What, what, why do we need to talk about data protection and privacy compliance? Oh, thank you so much. Uh, in terms of data protection, mm -hmm. uh, you can see that um, this is currently the trend actually at the moment. Mm -hmm. We know that the future is digital. So it is very important for you to know where your data is going, what mm -hmm. your data is being used for, because we've seen trends in terms of even um, you find you get unsolicited messages, you find trends where your data, when your data is taken, you f your phone can be hacked, you can even lose some uh, f uh, money, people can get into your account when your data is also taken. We also find uh, there are some phishing schemes mm -hmm. that are there currently where you receive maybe phone calls, people saying their banks, so that they can get some data out of you. So it's very important for you to protect your data mm -hmm. so that you cannot eventually have losses. Okay, yeah. good. So now, um, I'm trying to get the difference between data security, because this is around data security, and cyber security. Mm -hmm. Is that difference, uh, or is it, can they be used inter interchangeably? Well, um, I would say cyber security is more broad Mm -hmm. because it talks about everything in the cyberspace. But when you talk about data, you talk mm -hmm. about information, your okay. personal information. Mm -hmm. Is your personal information secure enough? So when you talk about data security, it's the same as talking about, uh, let's say, digital security. Mm -hmm. And uh, from there is when you talk about data protection. How do you protect your personal data? Mm -hmm. How do you protect your personal information? Okay. So we find that uh, there are various aspects in which you, even when you get into a building, you give out your data. Data is something that can be used. Um, it's currently, it's actually currently that can be used as a weapon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How so? So you'd find that, um, for example, let's say you have uh, someone hacks into your phone, you have certain uh, sensitive information mm -hmm. that could uh, eventually jeopardize. We have sensitive information that, is, um, that includes, let's say, health. Uh, okay. We have biometrics. Mm -hmm. uh, these are personal data that is very sensitive, such that it can, um, it can cause severe damage when it is abused or when it is used incorrectly. Okay. Yeah. Even your uh, bank details, yes, information. Yes. Yes. For okay, sure. That kind there of are certain mm. data that is sensitive, and there's others that is not. So when you talk about names, uh, your name, uh, your email, that is not necessarily sensitive. Mm -hmm. But when you talk about your health, let's say if someone leaks, uh, that maybe you have a certain kind of. Uh, disease and all that, that can also jeopardize in terms of your workplace, mm -hmm. even in terms of insurance. So those are the data that is considered as sensitive. All right. Yes. So when we talk about um, you uh, the data protection, do we have laws that, that govern that for people that don't know? Yes, yes. Um, in Kenya, for example, we have the Data Protection Act 2019. Mm -hmm. Uh, which also mandates the Office of the Data Protection, uh, the Office of the Data Protection Commissioner, which oversees um, all issues around data protection and also investigates. They have certain roles and responsibilities. Mm -hmm. And uh, regionally, we have the Malabo Convention. It's an AU, con uh, AU re regional convention on data protection. So this is uh, talks about everything about data protection and also. It's um, for for now we have about thirty five countries which have ratified the Malabo Convention in okay. Africa. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So we have laws that that govern this. Uh, yeah. So when your data is misused, then there there are places you can go and report this. Um, talking about the Data Protection Act twenty nineteen, we know that there's a new legislation to it. So tell us about it. What's what's in this new legislation that 
that was not uh, captured in the act? So um, I wouldn't say it's a new legislation per se, mm -hmm. but uh, the Office of the Data Protection releases uh, reg uh, certain regulations. Not It's not exactly an act, okay. but they are regulations. Mm -hmm. So we also have guidance notes. So some of the regulations include um, on consent, it talks about also registration uh, of data protection uh, mm -hmm. pro uh, controllers and data processors. It also talks about uh, data protection impact assessment, mm -hmm. which I can talk delve on it later on. Okay. Yes. So we'll get to, to all that, the consent breach and, and whatnot. But uh, as a person, as an ordinary citizen who's watching, why do they need okay uh, to to be mindful about how that data is used, um, giving content to, you know, um, the data controllers and, and whatnot. I'm sure that's what the data controllers are as yeah. we go yeah. on. So why do they need to, to care about how, you know, their data is used? So um, as, as I said before, or first of all, I would say um, you as a person, you're known as a data subject. Mm -hmm. So you're the one uh, who's you who to whom your data is being used. So we have uh, the data protector uh, pro pro controllers and data protect uh, processors. Mm -hmm. So uh, as a person, um, you can talk about maybe, uh, let's say when you go somewhere and someone asks for your your data, maybe even your location, maybe when you fill in uh, your email, um, your fo yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So when they take all this data, uh, do you do you wonder what do they use for that data? Exactly. Exactly. So there are, there are also come uh, there are certain instances where people even sell your data, so that they can be used for various purposes. And right now, when we are going f uh, to the age of even AI, mm -hmm. you'd find that there there are other issues that can come about with it. Even uh, you can be prosecuted for a crime that is not yours just because of your data being leaked. Okay. Yes. So they can use my data maliciously. Yes. For crime. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, me going uh, to, um, let's say, a building and then ask for my details, is it okay for me now to give my details or do I need to, to know what, what they're using my details for? Yes. Mm -hmm. So first of all, I, w I would like to um, highlight that recently there was a statement uh, that was issued in terms of uh, security guards being mandated mm -hmm. to take your ID, um, also certain information and retain your ID there. So this is, uh, this are, this it's important for you as a data subject or as a person to be able to ask the right questions. So when someone is asking you for your data, it's your right to say, uh, what are you going to use this data for? Mm -hmm. uh, is, is this mandatory? And it's, it shouldn't be because for someone to collect your data, you need to consent to it. Mm -hmm. So um, when, when it comes to certain issues, uh, if it was not recently that uh, the statement was issued that it is mandatory for that, so you'd find that it, it's also a conversation in the privacy and data protection space, whether this will jeopardize your right to privacy, your right to um, have your data protected, mm -hmm. and where, where will, is that data safe? Because you'll find that even security guards hold a lot of information. Yeah. What happens wh when that, uh, that book is leaked? Exactly. That is, uh, that's why you, you find that you sometimes you receive very unsolicited messages, Call and you're, you wonder, where did they get my number? Yeah. yeah. That's exactly where they get your number. Mm -hmm. Some they, uh, they get some of it. Maybe it's through your digital footprints, mm -hmm. your website, the uh, the amount right. of information that you've put out there. Okay. Uh, for some of them, it uh, they get from certain aspects where you you go to a event, you write your name, you write your email. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then okay. Then that's how you they get your information. Yes. But it's okay for you to actually ask what exactly. I think is my data for and, yeah. and give consent for it, or you can just refuse to give it. Yes. And it's okay. Yes. All right. Mm. So when we talk about um, the data processors, it's we, we now we know that these are the people who actually process, take down, and then the controllers. Who are the data controllers? So we have uh, the data controllers and data processors. Mm -hmm. So a data controller is the one that determines for what purpose that uh, your data is being collected for mm -hmm. and determines what is it's going to be used for. So, and the data processor is the one that takes the instructions from the data controller mm -hmm. and processes that data. Mm -hmm. So, for example, uh, when it comes to, let's say, uh, it's just a company mm -hmm. and they need certain data from their clients. 
So they say you should take uh, maybe the email, the water, that person is a data controller. But the one who actually processes that data and uh, takes those emails and all that is known as the data processor. processor. Yes. Okay, so companies, we can we ca can categorize companies as the data controllers. Exactly. Those who want the information. Yes. And there's those people that are actually doing it and the processors. Yes. And you are the data subject. Yes. So that's clear enough. So now, um, for people that have businesses, you know, we have young entrepreneurs who are watching and they are not very knowledgeable about, about these things, you know. So why is it important for them as business owners, as entrepreneurs to know that uh, they need to protect their customers' data if they're taking it and they need to get content from their customers? So um, first of all, I would like to say that uh, it's in the law. Mm -hmm. As you know, uh, most people say that uh, ignorance is no defense. Mm -hmm. But yeah. at the same time, we acknowledge that uh, there is need for more awareness and mm -hmm. advocacy in terms of uh, data protection. Because as you can see, our act is 2019, 2019 is pretty recent. Mm -hmm. So there is still an awareness campaign that is going on in terms of data protection and data processing. So um, according to the Office of the Data Protectioner, uh, they mandate various businesses, organizations, and um, all that to be uh, to register with the Office of the Data Protection Commissioner. Mm -hmm. Why? This is because uh, you'll hear certain cases where uh, there are certain cases where people have uh, gone to court and say that uh, my data was used for this purpose and I did not consent to it. Mm -hmm. So you find that those are scenarios that you, as a business person, you you can prevent yourself from when you comply with some of these data protection laws that are there. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for example, there was a case recently, uh, there was a case on um, Wanjiru, I don't know if you've heard about it, yeah. Wanjiru versus Machakos University. Mm -hmm. So her, uh, yeah. her data, her, her photo was posted in the website. So what she, she consent. Uh, for exactly. So she went to court and uh, the judgment was rendered that there was no consent. Uh, there was the issue of intellectual property because the data was also used for commercial purposes, <laughs> for advertising, yeah. and also she was given damages. So you as a business person, you prevent such uh, issues and also you protect yourself from uh, certain legal you know, repercussions, <laughs> yeah. That are there. yeah. I love that you've, you've mentioned that because people might assume it's just the information that you take in, but it's also the, you know, the photos because we have content creators out here and you might just be on the street and you take a video of people, you know, but they have not consented to it. So that's, you might also face uh, legal charges for that. So yeah. mm. Yes, 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 exactly. So uh, I think you also saw in... Uh, I think there was a recent case where someone was uh, took a video in a public space mm -hmm. and they were not allowed to do that. I think you know who I'm talking about. So uh, it was an airport space. So there are certain areas where you're not supposed to take uh, photos. photos. And, and also when you take photos uh, in any place, you should consent, at least consent to it. So ask someone, uh, I should, I, should <laughs> I do this? You know, you don't want to end up uh, facing certain repercussions and all that, yeah. Okay, but is that not too, um, too dire, <laughs> if I can put it like that? Because if you're in a public space, this is a content creator, mm. and maybe, you know, you are focusing on uh, a certain thing, but someone just passes by, uh, you know, you, you that they were not the main, <laughs> mm. the main uh, focus, but they just happened to be part of that video. So in that instance, do you have... A, you know, a case, you know, or, or is, are you still liable? Oh, what I can say is that um, it depends. Uh, th will that video show their face? And will that person uh, complain mm -hmm. on the So same? if it shows their face and they complain, then yes, they face the repercussion. Exactly. So it's, okay. uh, it's generally just talks about that um, someone's data, someone's personal information. You mm -hmm. have the right to privacy that is according to the constitution that's mm -hmm. also one of the laws that is considered in terms of data protection and privacy mm -hmm. so when you talk about uh, the right to privacy you're limiting someone else's right to privacy okay. because uh, uh, for example you you have the right not to be searched your your place not to be searched you as a person you have the right uh, not to have uh, certain information revealed about you mm -hmm. in um, in the public space when you've not consented so while you do that, maybe uh, you, you're infringing someone else's rights. Okay. Yeah. So your rights will end where someone else's rights starts. Begin. I yeah. love that. Your, your right to privacy ends where 
uh, someone else's right to privacy begins. Yes. I love that. That's very clear. So now, um, when we talk about the data protection uh, impact assessment, so how, how is that done for a small business owner? Do you need to do, do, you need to do it? So uh, a data mm -hmm. uh, impact protection impact assessment is done uh, necessarily to evaluate whether the information you're collecting is high risk. Mm -hmm. So this is majorly done in companies that are collecting lots of data and data that w could probably be high risk because also according to the Data Protection Act, there are certain exemptions in terms of registering also. So for example, you're still a startup and you mm -hmm. have less than nine, uh, nine employees and uh, your turnover is below a certain amount. Mm -hmm. uh, there are certain exemptions that you're actually exempted from registering with them because uh, they also look at what is your turnover mm -hmm. and uh, your capabilities as well. However, there are, there are certain areas in which regardless of uh, the number of employees, regardless of the turnover, you're, you're still mandated to um, you're still mandated to register, for example, the health sector, okay. hospitality, yeah, and all that, yeah. All right. And what is the, uh, who does the assessment for, for now for the big companies? Who, who um, is tasked to do the impact? So, assessment? Um, for example, a data protection officer. Mm -hmm. a, data, a data protection specialist is mandated. Uh, you, as a company, you will hire a data protection officer because also that's one of the requirements okay. that uh, you could do. And if you're not... Um, there yet, you're not a big company, you're still starting out, mm -hmm. you can actually outsource a uh, data protection officer, officer yeah, mm -hmm. to do that for you. Right. So uh, so that you can get at least a data protection experts who can conduct all the risk assessments that is necessary mm -hmm. and be able to just tell you forward what are some of the organizational and security measures you can take. All right. Yeah. Uh, from where you're seated, and you know, you, you said that our uh, data protection act is still young. We have not really stayed with it, so the awareness isn't um, that we haven't really uh, reached a reach where we can say everyone knows about it. But how would you? S what is the compliance rate? You know, how would you say people have um, taken it so far? Uh, you'd find that uh, mostly the major companies who have the most uh, risk mm -hmm. and also who, who will face the most repercussions in terms of personal data are mostly compliant. Okay. But when you find that, uh, for example, the SMEs, mm -hmm. the compliance rate is still a bit low. Uh, you find for some they will claim it's because of uh, the capacity, maybe uh, some of some uh, some of these uh, people cannot uh, maybe afford. Mm -hmm. However, uh, this is something that uh, you still mandated to do. So for SMEs, it's still law. For major companies like Safaricom, yeah. Airtel, which uh, process a lot of personal data, it's mandatory, and most of them have complied. But you'll also see, uh, for example, um, in the organizations, there's still a, a few organizations that have not done that. Uh, we've also f uh, found that. Um, Apart from the small, uh, small and medium enterpri enterprises, you find that there's still um, there's still more awareness that it that needs to be done in mm -hmm. terms of data protection. Okay. Yeah. So majorly, uh, the uptake with big companies, uh, it's on a yes, big scale. Yes. All right. So now we, we've talked about uh, me giving my data and it being used uh, without my consent, and you know how you know the repercussions that are there. But now there's this case where I did not even give you my data, and you have my data, and you're sending me a uh, nuisance text, you know, those dating farms that send you messages, and this I got from one of our viewers, uh, uh, the message, the question. So he's asking, what do we need to do? You know, what, do you, what do you do to stop those kind of messages from getting to you? I would say, for example, there was a case where someone, uh, a lot of people have received such Myself, I've received a lot of unsolicited messages, exactly. and you d you wonder where your data was taken. Yeah, mm -hmm. so for that, you actually raise, you go and complain at the office of the Data Protection Commissioner. Mm -hmm. They have their website. They have a section on complaint, where you will uh, read your information, the details, where you got that um, inform uh, that uh, text, unsolicited text from, and also it's important to also document the evidence mm -hmm. that they actually sent you that. So you find that even the Office of the Data Protection have played a huge role in terms of data protection awareness mm -hmm. so because you find that uh, for most companies unless I receive a penalty notice or enforcement notice that is when I will take action 
okay. and actually comply with data protection mm -hmm. um, laws. So in such a scenario, just complain to the Office of the Data Protection Commissioner on their website, write the details, and uh, they will investigate and they will take the necessary action to stop it. Okay. Yeah. And is this the same also when you have any other complaint, you, when you know your data, like or what happened in that university, when you know that your data has been used wrongly, do you, go, uh, do you use the same route, go to the Office of the Data Protection Commissioner or the website and issue a complaint, or do you need to go physically? Which one is more effective? Physically to the Office of the Data Protection okay, Commission. Okay, okay. No, uh, no uh, as you can see, most of our services right now, government services, are Online. digital. <laughs> yeah. So uh, majority, uh, uh, mostly, you'll just go to the, their website. Okay. All the information will be there. They they also do a, a certain amount of awareness campaigns. However, they only deal with issues on data protection. Mm -hmm. So uh, if it, if it's around, it's not around that scope. You, you can just uh, seek judicial redress and mm -hmm. go to a lawyer who okay. will institute that case in court. All right. Yeah. So, so far, what are some of the data issues, um, data uh, privacy issues and trends that have emerged? Uh, uh, recently, we have the issue of surveillance, mm -hmm. and it's actually a major topic right now in terms of, for example, as you saw, because of some of these femicide cases, okay. you saw that it, uh, most of them are mandated that there be CCTV. So there was also an issue around that. How do you balance privacy and security at the same time? Yeah. So there's the issue of um, AI auto and automated decision making. Mm -hmm. So you find that, uh, for example, in certain um, videos or even automated um, a AI kind of fake deep fakes, mm -hmm. uh, they have raised certain issues in terms of privacy concerns. So you, you uh, would you mind explaining deep fakes for those that don't know okay, about okay. it? Okay, uh, okay. So deep fakes are mostly, as you can see, there are certain videos that you see, mm -hmm. and it's not that person who has <laughs> said that. Yeah. So it's something that was generated through artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that also brings other issues of misinformation and disinformation. So uh, that is a major issue right now, mm -hmm. and uh, that's why there is the need of an AI policy, Kay. because you only have one in the in the whole world. We have very few guidelines, and also just one EU AI Act. Okay. So the issue of AI and privacy has also been something that is major, and also, uh, for example, when you use certain mm, even uh, when you use some of these. Um, AI uh, apps, uh, AI apps, was also some of this machine learning, uh, like ChatGPT. Mm -hmm. So you, you know, you put all your information there. Exactly. So that is also another. They issue. have your information. They have all your information. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And we don't know how you know how they're going to use it. Exactly. They're accountable to how they use it. And exactly. does our data protection um, act also, um, you know? Put into uh, pu uh, hold accountable those companies that uh, the international companies that have our information, like we use Google, we use you know, do they hold them accountable also? So um, as you can see uh, from the case of the World Coin, mm. yes, oh yes, we right. had that. <laughs> yes, yeah. Uh, so that was actually uh, one of the major cases that came around in terms of. Um, data protection, uh, how are they using their data. Mm -hmm. It's a company that is not from Kenya that is collecting some of our sensitive information mm -hmm. because biometrics are also very sensitive information. Kay. And uh, those are instances, it's actually included in the Data Protection Act in terms of uh, cross-border transfers, in terms of international uh, cooperation and all that. Mm -hmm. So there are certain procedures that the Office of the Data Protection will take mm -hmm. to hold certain, uh, to be able to hold certain uh, companies um, accountable. And in that case, it's by, let's say, limiting them, limiting, um, not giving them uh, the registration certificates. Uh, if, if they do the investigations and see that this is actually infringing your right to privacy and also your data protection, your mm -hmm. data is not protected enough. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the instances where the law has put in place to be able to protect uh, your personal data from some of these international Small companies. Yes. Okay, I think we're doing great on that. In fact, before we come to a close, you tell us about the best practices um, to follow to protect our data. Mm, I know there's this, um, you know, uh, elements of implementing data protection by design or by default. Mm. So uh, kindly elaborate on this. Uh, so um, 
privacy by design essentially talks about while you're developing let's say any any app or any tech tech that is going to be used mm -hmm. you ensure that in the development stage in the st in the initial stages that you incorporate the uh, the privacy aspect okay in it so this is uh, th this is also actually one of the principles in terms of privacy by design mm -hmm. and privacy by default so by design is you design uh, the innovation itself by ensuring that it is incorporated in the beginning stages mm -hmm. and uh, it's the and privacy by default now it's uh, later on by ensuring that you take the necessary measures Actions like yeah. what most companies are doing exactly now. all right yeah okay so as we close on this what are some of the best practices as an individual to to follow in order to make sure that our data is is safe yes um First of all, I would like to say, th uh, this might seem like little things that you do, mm -hmm. but they hold significant um, as aspects. So, okay. for example, your password. Do not use a very easy password. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Just um, put your, your expected, as, as it says, put uh, an uppercase, a lowercase. A numeral. Yes, mm. do all that and let it not be very... Uh, predictable also another thing you can do is uh, do not save it in your computer oh you know, yes okay yeah. just save it. so yes. you, you're not supposed to click on remember password no you'd rather like just write somewhere all your passwords because when mm. you say uh, remember there are certain aspects there are, there are hackers out here that can be able to access because you've saved it through um, maybe your computer or anything. So that is also something that you, you, you could take. Okay, so you'd rather account. log in every time that you're yeah, using exactly. a website or whatever. Okay. Yeah, you can't protect your data. Mm. Also, another thing is use the two-factor authentication method that mm. is there. And um, also, anywhere you go, it's, it's very necessary that you know your rights as a data subject. Ensure that um, you have the right to consent anywhere you feel like mm -hmm. uh, someone is asking for your data, you have the right to ask, well, how are you using this data? Because one of the requirements for data controllers and data processors mm -hmm. is that uh, when you're collecting any data for a data subject, and that means any company that is taking your data for whatever purpose, mm -hmm. they're supposed to tell you what they're using that data for, for what purpose they're going to use it for, for how long they're going to retain it, mm -hmm. because that's also an issue. And also if you feel like um, they're taking too much data that is not s necessary, that is also one of the principles that you as a data subject, you're, you're mandated to, to tell them, no, this is too much. Uh, I don't think I can give okay. uh, you this data. Mm -hmm. And yeah. All right. Mm. So it's they're just the b small basic things that we can, you know, we can implement and it makes yes. all the difference. Yes, as an individual. As an individual. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As a company, you have a broad aspect that uh, there's a lot you have to do. Mm -hmm. First of all, it's very important to have a data protection officer or outsource the same if um, compared to your capabilities. It's mm -hmm. very important to register with the Office of Data Protection Commissioner because they also mandate if there's any data breach, you're supposed to uh, you, you, you just let them know and indicate to them within 72 hours that there was a data breach and um, this and this happened okay. so that they can be able to also look into it okay. if necessary. And also as a company, just put the necessary organizational and company measures. You, ha you have to have also privacy policies, privacy and data protection policies to ensure that um, as a if any data subject comes, they, they are able to read. Mm -hmm. Look also you as a person when you log into certain uh, apps, when you download, download them websites, I know a lot of people disregard this, but just look at the privacy policy, what it says, okay. and ensure that your data is not <laughs> going to be used for whatever mm -hmm. purpose. Yeah. So we shouldn't ignore, you know, agree, you know, you just yeah. got rights to mm -hmm. agreeing without mm -hmm. knowing how exactly they're going to use your data. So yes. it's very important. Yeah. Thank you very much, Linda. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything that you want to add us to us before we close? Um, just be aware, ensure, mm -hmm. be aware about uh, your data protection rights as a data subject. Mm -hmm. um, and if you don't know where to find some of these uh, laws, you can just go to the Office of the Data Protection Commissioner website and look at some of these guidance notes, some of these uh, issues in terms of data protection. Uh, for us, as Kenya ICT Action Network, we do a lot of awareness and advocacy uh, on data protection. Mm -hmm. So to ensure that we also have an, a safe online environment and be able so that as we as the future is digital, we are able to take advantage of some of these 
techno uh, what the technology offers mm -hmm. and by that ensuring that also our data is safe and we are not uh, just leaving our data out there for whatever purposes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, Linda, for uh, coming on board and sharing such amazing insights on this topic. We hope to have you again. Thank you so much. Right. Thank you for having me. Most welcome. Mm -hmm. So that has been uh, Linda Gishohi, who's a lawyer and also a data protection specialist at Kicktonet, talking to us about data protection and privacy compliance in Kenya. I hope you've taken a lot from this remember you are a data subject there's the data protection uh you know there's uh the data processor rather the data controller and we all have our duties on this if you are a data subject know how you uh, take care of your personal data so that it's not used anyhow. Only give content to your data. If you are an owner of a company, if you're an entrepreneur, SME, uh, you know, make sure that you are compliant to the Data Protection Act. Register with the Office of the Data Protection uh, Commissioner and uh, do your due diligence on everything. That has been it on Sport to Tech. My name is Stephanie Nyata. We'll take a short break and then we are back with entertainment. Stick with us. <laughs>